Today, we're getting up close and personal with mice and elephants. Hey, ma'am fam, and welcome to another episode of Hidden Gems, the show where I take you around the theme parks and show you some of the most underrated experiences, restaurants, and more. Today, we are doing two different things at Animal Kingdom. One is one of my favorite underrated experiences with some characters, and the other I've never done before. So let's get to it. We got a lot to do, and you know what it's going to be? Wild. I have to say it. I have to, I'm sorry. Today we are at my favorite Walt Disney World Park, Disney's Animal Kingdom, where we are going to do the tour, Caring for Giants, which gets you up close and personal with the elephants at Kilimanjaro Safaris. And then we're gonna have lunch at Tusker House. This is a character dining restaurant, one of my favorites on property, I think really underrated. So we're gonna check that out as well. And overall, I think it's gonna be a great day. First up, Caring for Giants. This is an hour long experience that kicks off right here in Africa near Kilimanjaro Safaris. It is $35 per person and you have to be at least four years old to go on the tour. They have a couple different experiences like this here in Animal Kingdom. There's also a tour experience with the rhinos. If you wanna get really wild and go a little more extreme, they've got Wild Africa Trek. I did that in another video. That one involves some actual crossing of the crocs and some food. There's a sunset safari where you get to dine and have some drinks out on the boma with the animals. That one's on my list too. But again, today we are gonna get up close and personal with some elephants and I'm so excited. All checked in, got my little badge with my name tag. Uh, you check in right here next to Kilimanjaro Safari. So they let me know it's gonna be an hour long tour, no bathroom. Parts of this will be backstage so we can't take any pictures or video in those places and I'm ready to go see some elephants. While we are backstage, please do your best to follow me on sidewalks and crosswalks. I want to make sure everyone is staying as safe as possible. We get a lot of delivery trucks back there. Also, while we're backstage, again, no photos or videos are permitted. Once we get to that platform, I'll let you know. Whip out cameras and cell phones, take photos and videos. All right, we're headed backstage, so I have to turn all of this off. No photos or videos, so we're at the viewing area. Also note, I may not talk that much during the tour and do voiceover, just because I don't want to disrupt the guide or anybody else's experience, but I'm so excited. Once we got backstage, we headed into a bus and we saw a few Kilimanjaro safari trucks and learned that there are 44 safaris vehicles, which is cool. We drove past some of the animal barns and I geeked out because we also drove past the original dinosaur, the Triceratops that used to sit outside of the attraction before they swapped it to Aladar. He needs a new paint job, but it was cool to see. We also learned a little bit more about how they care for the animals at Animal Kingdom. They are accredited by the AZA, which has a very high standard of animal care. And we also learned a little bit about the training they do for the animals. It's not training for like tricks like you might do with your dog or cat, but it's behavioral to help with the care. So things like feeding or vet care. If you've watched The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom on Disney Plus, you can see them do different things like teaching the drafts to put their feet up so that they can get their hooves trimmed. We also passed by a horticultural field that's bigger than Disneyland, and it grows some of the enrichment food for the different herbivores at Animal Kingdom. And then we also learned that other food comes from local farmers and the land pavilion, which I learned on the Living with the Land episode of this series. Also, this field grows some of the topiaries for Flower and Garden Festival, so that's kind of cool. Well, the bushes that will become the topiaries. They don't grow in those shapes. Once we arrived at our destination, we were taken up a ramp, and then we were able to start filming again as we looked out over the savanna and saw several of the elephants. Oh, I already see an elephant. Look how cute it is. I think it's a girl. I think it's a female based on what I know about the safari. A couple of cool things I learned about elephants. For starters, they have more muscles in their trunks than we do in our entire body. Also, one of the big differences between African and Asian elephants, besides the size of their bodies and their ears, is that African elephants have a two appendage trunk, so they kind of pinch food as they pick it up to put it in their mouth. But Asian elephants only have a one appendage trunk, so they do more of a scoop motion. Elephants that you see at Animal Kingdom are African elephants. Total, they have nine elephants right now, three males and six females, but they are hoping that some more of the females have babies soon. But elephant pregnancies are so long, they're about two years long, that they have to be pretty far along in order for the vets to be able to tell that they're pregnant. 
The elephants that we saw out on the reserve are named Luna, Nadira, and Kianga. And it's interesting because two of them are elephant moms and they don't like each other, but they do take turns babysitting the little ones. So I thought that was kind of fun. Also, if you check out Luna, you'll notice that she is eating her hay with that scoop motion. And we asked why, because we already learned about the appendages. They don't need to scoop food since she's an African elephant. But our tour guide let us know that her mother was raised with Asian elephants and they do the scoop motion. So it's a learned practice from Luna's mother to do the scoop motion, even though it's completely unnecessary which I thought was really interesting. As a theme park nerd, I was also delighted to learn a little bit more about how Kilimanjaro Safaris works. For starters, you can see the elephants eating out of a bucket. And if you're on the safaris looking at it from the other way, you wouldn't be able to see the bucket. You would just be able to see the rocks. But we were technically in a backstage area, so they don't care that you can show the bucket. However, when you're on the ride, they want it to feel more natural and it wouldn't be very natural to have a bucket out there. Also, this kind of wonky looking leaning palm tree is not real. That is a Disney magic palm tree, as our guide put it. And it has a pulley system in it so that they could pull up hay. One of the things they do at Animal Kingdom is kind of lure the animals out with food and snacks so that they will be places that the guests on Kilimanjaro safaris can see them. And one way they can do that with the elephants is hang the hay high up in the sky. Years now, and it's a project that Disney's Conservation Fund has been able to fund for a while too. But basically what they do is they'll do a real hive and a, like a fake hive and they kind of alternate. And they're all connected with a wire. So if the bees aren't awake and the elephants can't hear them, the elephants will like hit the wire, which wakes up the bees. And the elephants are like, ah, no bees. So they kind of go the other way. But the bees also help out the farmers. So the farmers are getting better plants and they're getting honey. And the elephants are not eating the farmer's plants. So the farmers and the elephants are being mad at each other out there, which is really good, right? Now, some places in Africa can't use the beehives. So they use something else called the smelly elephant repellent, which is kind of a tongue twister. But what what are some things that you think are stinky? Elephant poop. Elephant poop. Yeah. Or like rotten eggs, right? Have you ever eaten something really spicy? Yeah. Maybe like something with like peppers in it. Yeah. Or like jalapenos. So elephants, they can smell all that stuff way far, way farther away than we can. They also don't really like to taste spicy things. They don't really like ginger either. So some farmers will put all the stuff that smells really bad or tastes really bad in like a bag or like a bottle and they'll line their plants with that. And that also works to help keep the elephants away too. We also learned that elephants eat 300 pounds a day and they poop about half of that, 150 pounds a day. All those blades of grass and hay have to come out, and in some places they actually use elephant poop as things like shingles and paper because it's more readily available and it's mostly made out of grass and hay so you can dry it out and then use it for these different materials. They also use it for paper and we learned that's what our name tags were made out of. So that was a fun souvenir to take home. They even had a display of elephant poop. It was coated in plaster, but it was real poop. Only one other person would hold the poop, but um, I once smoked elephant poop in actual Africa because our guide was talking to us about ancient tribes using it for medicinal purposes. So holding plastic poop really didn't seem like a big deal at that point. And they put out poop. more brows and more food. Whatever. Away from elephant poop, here's the cutest thing I learned, and that's elephant dates are called Howdies. Howdies can be a platonic or a romantic engagement. They want to always slowly introduce new animals to each other. And I think that's hilarious. And I'm going to tell all my friends that are dating to call them howdies now. Um, also, Nadira, one of the female elephants we saw, might be pregnant from a howdy, so fingers crossed. After about 45 minutes of observing these beautiful animals and asking our guide, Reagan, anything we wanted to know, uh, it was time to head back. But not before I noticed this snare art elephant. It was made out of snares that were found in actual Africa and were removed because those are dangerous to different animals. 
in a conservation effort, and a model of an elephant foot. Couple things about elephant feet. First of all, elephants can't jump. They're way too heavy and they break their ankles. But if you look at the dissection of the elephant foot, which this is not real by the way, you'll notice that there's bones and then fat and it looks like cheese, which I told her and she said that's weird, but not the weirdest way she's heard described. Basically, it's a cushion for their joints since they're always on their feet. They're always moving and walking. Also, their footsteps are basically silent, which I hadn't even noticed even though I've been watching elephants for 45 minutes. But when you think about it, you never really hear an elephant walk. It also allows them to sense where water is in the wild. So elephants need to migrate to find water. And because of the fat cushions in their feet, they can sense the vibrations of running water like a stream or somewhere that animals might be gathering and it helps them find it. So very, very cool stuff we learned. Yeah, that's so <laughs> just wrapped up my elephant experience. It was so cool. First of all, before I even talk about elephants, look at all this stuff right here. This is just stuff to make Animal Kingdom look more realistic and it's everywhere. Like the detail, mind blowing. So basically with the tour experience, you're gonna go out onto a platform and you're gonna stay there for pretty much the entire tour and look at the elephants and the keeper will tell you information. You can ask questions. It was really interesting. If you like elephants, you get about 80 feet away from the elephants they said is about the closest, which is much, much closer. It still sounds far away, but it's much closer than you get when you're on the safari. Um, as someone who loves Kilimanjaro safaris, who loves animals, who likes elephants, it was really cool to see them and just kind of observe them and learn more about them. And maybe the coolest thing that we learned at the very end of the tour is that all the proceeds from this tour go back to elephant conservation. So if you needed more reason to book an experience like this, it's pretty cool that you get a unique experience here at Walt Disney World and then you're also doing good for the elephants out in the wild. I know the $35 per person cost can add up if you've got a bigger party and it is only an hour. I think that possibly if you're between a few experiences, then behind the scenes is a little bit more of a formal tour. And this is more of just a viewing experience. So that's something you might want to consider. If you are someone who loves elephants, loves wild animals, loves Animal Kingdom, or just wants to do something a little bit new and unusual, maybe you've been here several times and you want to do an enhancement, I think it is a pretty fair price and it's only an hour long, so it's not going to take a big chunk out of your Animal Kingdom's day. So I enjoyed myself, but now it is time to head over to one of my favorite underrated meals. This is used to be my number one character dining spies, which hopefully knows took it, but it's still one of my faves. So. Keeping the party going, checking in for Tusker House. Now, Tusker House, again, character experience hosted by Donald. Typically also has Mickey, Daisy, and Goofy in their safari best. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I actually haven't been since it returned to a buffet. So excited to see what that's like. Got the text that my table is ready. So I'm about to head in. Want to point out a cute little detail though. I may have pointed this one out before, but I just love it. You'll notice all these beautiful masks back here and the brand, the seller, the craftsman, Joe Rody masks and beads. That is of course a nod to Joe Rody, the lead Imagineer of Disney's Animal Kingdom, one of my personal heroes, the guy with the cool earring that gives him all his power. That last part might not be completely true, but I'm convinced. Anyway, let's go have lunch with Donald. Tusker House is meant to be your safari orientation center where you have your meal before or after going out on your safari. So everywhere you look around the restaurant, there's gonna be posters and information about the animals you might see on the safari, some safari information about who's driving the trucks. It's really, really well themed like this entire park. Hi, Donald! How are you? Thank you for having me to lunch. It looks great. Did you do the cooking? You did? Oh my God, you must be tired. Do you need to have a seat or have, have a snack or something? Oh yeah, have a seat, Donald. It's been a long day for you. You've been cooking. What's your favorite thing over there? Is that? Donald and Bobby. <laughs> Donald's telling me his favorite thing on the buffet. Is it the meat station? Yeah, you like the carved meats. Okay, I'm surprised by that, but okay. Can we take a selfie, Donald, before you know you have to get back to work? <laughs> get all ready. So dapper. Thank you, Donald. You're so cute. Can I also take a picture? Thank you, Donald. 
Can I also take a picture of just you so I can show how everyone how cute your uh, safari outfit is? Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. I know. Oh, he's probably, he's on a safari. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. Bye. I just saw Donald and he's so cute. And Mickey's almost here too. And then we're going to hit the buffet. But first, it is not a meal with me unless you have three beverages. It's an 11.30 reservation. It's technically still brunch in my world. Uh, so I have a coffee. She brought me a whole carafe. Bless Denise, my new favorite person, the wonderful server I'm having today. Some water. And then I also got a little baby of the jungle juice. This is the famous Disney juice. It's passion fruit, orange guava. It's called Pog Juice at the Polynesian. It's called Florida Sunshine at the Riviera. It's called Jungle Juice here in Animal Kingdom Lodge, whatever you want to call it, it is delicious. Now, lucky for me, as a beverage goblin, the drinks are included when you eat here, as long as you're getting something like soda, juice, tea, uh, coffee, that is all included. Uh, the cost for the meal is here at Tuskgrass, if you come for breakfast, it's 45 for adults, 29 for kids. Lunch and dinner is 59 for adults, 38 for kids. And if you would like to upgrade to a wine or beer or a specialty cocktail, they also have a full bar, you can do that. But for today, I'm just gonna stick with what's included. And I'm really excited because Mickey's right there. Hi, Mickey. How are you? I love your safari outfit. Have you been on a safari today? Yeah? What kind of animals did you see? Elephants? Giraffes. Oh, uh, I just saw the elephants. I, I, I went on the tour. Can we take a selfie, Mickey? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. Gonna check out the buffet now, but one thing I love about this restaurant is it feels like you are outside in an open air market but you are actually inside. It's just a skylight with blankets hung. So it is air conditioning and it feels great in here as opposed to being outside, but it feels truly like you're outside in, in Africa. Look at, I just, I talk about this all the time, but like this is not an old building, but they made it look like an old building because they're geniuses. And look at like the exposed wires hanging and, oh, I'm just obsessed with this part. Starting off the buffet, we've got some different breads and spreads, hummus, mango chutney, and butter. Look at all these fun breads. How might you get? I think I'm gonna get a honey rosemary roll. That sounds great, but they've also got the zebra bread, which is just dark bread layered in with white bread. They've got cornbread. Next, we have some deli meats, grapes, slaw, and cheese cubes. And then we have a really good looking salad bar with a bunch of fresh produce, red onions, cucumbers, feta, chickpeas. Have a couple of pre-made salads too, a chickpea and quinoa, a black eyed pea and a roasted cauliflower. Also, there are a lot of things with a little plant emoji on the signs, which means it's plant-based. So this is a great place to come if you do have dietary restrictions. Got the kids buffet, but of course anyone can grab anything they want. Corn, green peas, classic chicken, mashed potatoes, corn dog nugs. Don't mind if I do. I'm just gonna grab one. So I'm gonna eat a bunch of other stuff, but I need one. Mac and cheese, rice, and two different curries, shrimp and chicken. Here, oh, it looks like they're getting new mashed potatoes. Yum, I'm gonna wait for those for sure. Uh, and then we've also got some zatar braised beef. Gonna get some of that. Oh, look, a fresh mashed potatoes. Amazing. Mac and cheese on the big kids' plates as well. Then they have mealy pap with chakalaka. Chakalaka is like a braised tomato stew, and mealy pap is kind of like, uh, almost like a grits or a cornmeal, kind of ground uh, starch. Then you have what's called cauliflower bunny chow. So it's a cauliflower mixture, roasted root, vegetables, feisty green beans. I don't know what makes them so feisty, but I'm gonna try them. Some braised collards and a uh, some rice pilaf with plant-based sausage. Banana bread pudding, be back for you. Some red skin potatoes, salmon, and some tandoori spice rubbed chicken. Again, remember they had 
unseasoned chicken for the kids, but I like tandoori spices. And I'm gonna get extra of this sauce right here. And then to round things out, we have a carving station with roasted pork as well as beef and lamb shawarma. And then there is a shawarma dressing station. So they have non bread and all kinds of vegetables and tzatziki sauce, a few other sauces. So you can make yourself a little shawarma. There's also soup over here. So lots and lots to choose from. Let's go eat. All right, let's get into it. First up, bread. The last delicious. It is also very loud in here. So putting the new mics to the test, most character dining is loud. So if that's going to be an issue for viewers of your party, just keep that in mind. But that's great bread. Definitely better than a standard roll. You can taste both the honey and the savory rosemary. Going to try the salad. I'm mostly excited for the salad because it has a, a coconut curry uh, vinaigrette. Mm. Fresh and tangy, a little bit of sweetness in that dressing. Produce is great. Let's try the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese is a star. It's worth a reservation. It's so cheesy and garlicky and creamy. It is awesome. I'm so glad it's not like regular mac and cheese. It's five stars for the mac and cheese. And now the mashed potatoes. If I can get one. I love the skin on mashed potato and I love that I got the fresh one. So I got some of those crispies on top, really buttery, kind of lumpy, delicious. Uh, now I'm gonna do some of the curry. I went for the chicken curry and the rice. I love the curry flavor profile. It's not spicy. It just has that really curry flavor. That sounds like to describe curry like curry, but it's such a distinct flavor and spice profile. If you've never had curry before, this would be a great chance to try it because you're not committing to a whole dish. And having things like rice and different curries is what I love about Tusker House because you have plain rotisserie chicken, you have mac and cheese and things with like heaters, but you also have things like green curry for, for more adventurous heaters. But that is fantastic. Tiniest, tiniest bit of heat as I'm continuing to eat it, but overall, it's really flavorful. <laughs> Hi, Daisy. How are you? Thank you. It's delicious. Did you cook it? No, Donald said he cooked it. Is he? Is he? No. You're the taste tester. Oh, that's perfect. Can I see your outfit? Can you show me? Oh my gosh. Here, let me get a video of it. Yes, yes. I, what I love about your outfits, Daisy, is that you don't wear pants, but you always match your bracelet. Yes, she always has a bangle and a kerchief and an ascot. Oh my God. And the heels always looks perfect. An icon. <laughs> Can we take a selfie, Daisy? Thank you so much, Daisy. Can I take a picture of you so I can show people your outfit? Yes. She's like, I need a space. Oh, she's so fabulous. Thank you, Daisy. She's the queen of fashion and accessories. I just love her so much. Also, Daisy doesn't come to a lot of character meals, so if you've got a Daisy fan, this is the one to go for. Now we're going for the tandoori chicken. I put extra of the sauce on there. Oh my God, so good. The chicken is cooked perfectly. It's moist with that nice kind of crispy skin on the outside. The tandoori is delicious. It's almost a little bit sweet because it's definitely got some cinnamon or nutmeg in there. And then it's got curry and uh, maybe some ginger as well as some garlic and different peppers, coriander. It is so, so delicious. I love that you can get the extra sauce. The food's been great. Yeah, everything's delicious. You taste tested everything. Yeah. Did you do all the cooking? Mo some of the cooking. Some of the cooking. You had help. That's what you have. You delegate. Yeah, you tell people what to do. I like it. I like it, Donald. Can we take a picture? Donald just came back and he made everyone clap for his arrival. So cute in here. And the characters are great. They're having nice long interactions with people. It doesn't feel rushed and hectic like some other character meals do. 
Uh, let's try these green beans. I'm still not sure what makes them feisty. They got a little heat in the seasoning. I think that's what makes them feisty, but they're cooked perfectly. They're still buttery, nice, crunchy green beans. And I like the little bit of heat, but they had the plain ones on the kids' buffet. If you don't, now let's try this braised beef. It reminded me of an African spice pot roast. Pot roast is not my favorite kind of meat. I didn't enjoy that as much as the uh, chicken, but the, the flavor is great with that zatar spice. I think I've tried everything on this plate, so now let's go to the shawarma. All right, time for the shawarma. Mm. The shawarma is very tasty as well. I love the DIY making your own. I love tzatziki sauce, that fresh, bright dill and cucumber flavor with the yogurt. Uh, the produce is all fresh and great. Oh my gosh, hi! Hi, Mickey. How are you? Good. Have you been cooking? You helped? Donald said he did all the cooking. Don Classic Donald, right? What did you make? You made the bread? That's very impressive. I like the zebra bread you made. That probably took a long time. <laughs> you had to bake all the stripes. It's beautiful. You did great. Could we take a picture? The lamb beef mixture is really tender as well. Everything's awesome. This restaurant is so good. I am now debating if I like it or Riviera more over in Topolino's. Honestly, it's a toss up. I am more of a character breakfast girly because I like the waffles and I like the breakfast foods. Um, and a great time to come here to Tusker House is if you can get an earlier reservation and then you can pop on the safari really early. I used to always do that uh, growing up. I would get the earliest Tusker House and then be one of the first people in the park and then also the first people on the safari. It's dessert time and y'all, these are the cutest desserts I've ever seen on a buffet. First of all, you have the Fab Five Safari Brownie. And if you look closely, the little decal is the Fab Five on a safari, which is Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, and Pluto. Then you have these little miniature bee-themed cupcakes, little chocolate mousses, little butterfly-themed cupcakes, Bay Bay pineapple tarts, and an African-layered cookie bar with a little sunflower. And then on the kids' buffet, you've got more of the bee cupcakes, you've got sugar cookies, you have double chocolate zebra cookies, and then look at those. Those are s'mores pops, the little tree of life decal. These are honestly the best desserts I've seen on a character buffet in Walt Disney World. Picked up a couple of the desserts. I didn't forget about you, bread pudding. Also the s'mores pop, the cutie brownie, and the cookie bar. Starting with the banana bread pudding. I don't know if we're going to top that. It tastes like very delicious banana bread with that extra sweetness. There's like a nice vanilla sauce on top. I don't think it's as good as the one at the Polynesian or the one at Boma, but it is very good bread pudding if you like bread pudding. Now I'm going to try this cookie bar. Not 100% sure what's in it, but I'm excited. Ooh, that's fantastic. It kind of tastes like a blondie and a cookie had a baby. There's definitely some kind of nut in it. I think peanut, so it's got a nice crunch to it. Delicious, not overly sweet. Here's the s'mores pops. Yeah, that's just a big marshmallow. It's a big marshmallow dipped in chocolate rolled in graham. I prefer more of the graham chocolate flavor versus the marshmallow, but it's fun. Your kids are going to like it. Now the brownie. Mm. Mm. Sometimes brownies are too rich for me, and I mean this as a compliment. It tastes like the best Betty Crocker box mix brownie. Yeah, these are all really good. I'm surprised. Oftentimes the little desserts are really cute, but not that great. And these all taste good, and they're cute. How are you? Have you been out on a, oh, do you want some dessert? Yeah, I could, I could spare some. Have you been out on the safari? Yeah, looking for animals. What's your favorite animal? The elephant? <clears throat> the elephant? Yeah. I saw them earlier today. They're very cute. Yeah, here, they're out there. You can go look at them too. Yeah, let's go. Let's go on the safari. All right, here we go. <laughs> He's leaving. He's, he wants to go on the safari. Well, maybe later. Maybe later. <laughs>
racked up a fabulous meal at Tuscraft's. I really love that character dining restaurant so much. I think the food is spectacular. I think the characters are adorable in their safari outfits and Animal Kingdom is a great park to sit back and luxuriate in because it gets warm here and it's great to get here early for safari. It's lovely. So definitely more underrated than a lot of popular character dining spots. It's much easier to get a reservation here than say Chef Mickey's or Topolino's Terrace. So highly recommend and let me know down in the comments what your favorite character dining restaurant is. Well, friends, that was a great time here in Disney's Animal Kingdom, crossing off a few more things off of our hidden gems list. What other hidden gems do you want us to explore? Tours, restaurants, and more? Let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us on Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Bye. Bye.